Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to show you this project which has been in the making for quite some time now but is finished just in time for the colder weather. I will show you the process of making a trench coat. So before we begin and as you can see I'm just copying the pattern of my old trench coat I just wanted to say thanks to all of you for supporting my work and for subscribing to my channel. We are over 10,000 now. Crazy how a week ago I was at like 200 and now it's over 10k. It's insane to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, being interested in my projects and showing me all this love in the comments. I really, really appreciate it. I sneak peeked a little bit of this project on Instagram and also asked you guys a few questions about the design. So without further ado, let's get started. Copying a pattern from an existing piece of clothing can be a little tricky in the shoulder area, so I make sure to start with parts that are easily accessible. So here in the front piece that will be the collar, the hem, and part of the side seam. For tracing the side seam I am using a tool which is called Tracing Wheel, a sewing essential in my opinion which you can get in any sewing store or online for pretty cheap. This is used to poke through the fabric and into the paper without destroying anything. You then are able to see the small indents in the paper which you can trace to make a complete copy of a pattern. After finishing the pattern with the basic pieces for a trench coat, so front, side and back piece, sleeves, collar and collar band, I cut out the fabric of cheap cotton canvas to sample it. As you know, before sewing anything out of your fashion fabric, it is necessary to sample your piece first to see if you want to change anything. That also includes patterns you bought to see if it fits your body correctly. There is no need to sew everything together in a neat way, just make sure the pieces line up. This is your first step to check your pattern for mistakes. As you can see here, my hem doesn't line up, which derived from not measuring the length of the side seams. I like to either mark mistakes directly onto my piece or write a list of mistakes to be changed after fitting the trench coat sample. So this is me wearing the sample and it is way too wide, so this is something I need to change. My color turned out pretty nicely though. Quick side note, I really like oversized coats and clothing in general, and I wanted to make an oversized trench coat, but changed my mind after fitting. That's why I used the brown trench coat to copy the pattern from in the first place, because that one is oversized and I quite like it, and so I wanted to do something similar to that. Since I decided to do a more fitted silhouette though, I had to take the sample in by quite a lot, and I would always recommend to make up your mind beforehand and not during sewing or during fitting, since it calls for way, way, way more work and sampling. Anyways, let's continue with the video. I took in the pattern by about 20 centimeters at the waist, which is a lot. I hit a few spots where I wanted less fabric, that was the shoulders in particular and the back and the front pieces. At first I was like, great, easy, draw a line from front to back over the shoulder and take the whole thing in by 10 centimeters, so half since you're working in halves. But if you change the shoulders, most of the times you have to change the sleeves. Especially with such a big change, the seams wander quite a bit. The shoulder seam was around half of my upper arm. I wanted it to sit more or less on the shoulder, though that means the whole sleeve cap needs to be higher, the sleeve itself more narrow, the armhole different and so on and so on. So I went from, yeah, let's just copy this pattern and sew to I am making a pattern from almost zero without any guidelines and measurements since I decided to change my mind in the middle of everything. I mean, I could have started with making a pattern myself, but I was kind of stubborn and I didn't want to give up on my pattern, if that makes sense. I was like, I have to make this work. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, this is also why I decided to cut out most of the pattern making. Mind you, it's still 10 minutes of sampling, which I guess says a lot of the overall time spent on the pattern in this project. Since for the viewer, I am basically doing random cuts and taping something and drawing a new line and whatnot. 
I guess what I want to say is that this is more of a watch me go crazy over this project video than a tutorial. <laughs> and yes, I read your comments saying you would like to see Petter making tutorials, don't worry, I know, I know. <laughs> this is just not the project for it, I guess. <laughs> My second sample was still too wide, so I repeated the process, taking the whole thing in by about 8 centimeters. Third sample now, and I was thinking to take in the back a bit more, but decided to leave it like this instead and let the storm flap, which goes over the back and the left side of your front piece, do the singeing work. I basically copied the back and side pieces, measured a length of 40 centimeters, I think is what I ended up doing, and put some darts in the pattern piece to make the hemline about 10 centimeters smaller than the back piece measures. This creates a beautiful ruffle effect in the back. I put two lines roughly dividing the storm flap in threes and measured 2.5 centimeters on the hem, which I will take out. I do that by cutting those lines all the way up to the shoulders and cutting just towards the lines so that the pieces still hold together by a few millimeters. You can then easily overlap the paper and tape the whole thing back together. And of course, a quick sampling of that pattern piece, which made me actually realize that I wanted to include the side pieces onto the storm flap as well and not the front piece. So my storm flap is just going over the side pieces and the back piece. And I just skipped the front piece because I, I'm not a big fan of it. While fitting, I also marked where I wanted the pockets to be. These are my finished pattern pieces, front, side and back piece. Sleeve, under sleeve, which I wanted to include as a design feature, storm flap and the facing for the sleeves. Inner collar band, outer collar band, inner collar and outer collar. I am doing a butterfly lining, so this is my back piece. Back facing, sleeve lining, front facing and front lining piece. Belts for the sleeves and waist belt, as well as the corresponding belt loops and the pockets. So let's get started with actually cutting everything out of my fashion fabric. After being done with cutting everything out, the next step is interfacing, which is my favorite part. Not, I hate it. Anyways. <laughs> Since I had quite a lot of pieces which needed interfacing, I decided to put the interfacing on my cutting table, which I upholstered with a few layers of fabric to be able to iron on it, and laid out all my pieces. Once you're done with ironing on the interfacing, I overlocked all visible seams. Since I am doing a butterfly lining, that means all my side seams will be visible, so I overlock all of these seams. And this is how it ended up looking. Onto the pockets. Pockets are always the same, so to avoid repeating myself, I made a small montage of my process. But if you're interested in how to sew pockets, go click on the eye. There will be a video where I explain how to sew pockets yeah. in detail.
Next, I'm gonna work on the storm flap and back body piece. I'm gonna sew the hem of the storm piece right sides together and top stitch it twice to look like this. In general, for the trench coat, I am using this stitching all over as decorative stitching. Then I sew the side seams of the back piece and the side pieces together to be able to attach the storm flap to the seam allowances of neck, armholes and part of the side seam. I will treat these as one piece from now on. Make sure to stitch only in the seam allowances so the stitching stays invisible. And this is the ruffle effect I was talking about earlier which came out absolutely perfect. Once that is done, I attach the front pieces and sew the shoulder seams together. After every step, I also iron the seams open or to one side depending on which seams. The side seams are ironed open, the shoulder seams go towards the back piece. I also top stitch the shoulder seams. For the collar and collar band, it is important to know which one of the pieces is the inner and which one is the outer collar. The outer collar is the one normally visible when folded down, so it is attached to the facing of the back piece wherever the inner collar is smaller and attached to the back piece itself. Pro tip, the collar pieces only differ by about 3 to 5 millimeters on the sides and corners, therefore it's really important you mark your pattern pieces. Also don't skip those few millimeters while making a pattern as that really makes your collar stay the way it's supposed to. For a nicer folding line and less bulge, I cut away half of the seam allowance of the inner collar before stitching. I also start stitching from 1 centimeter away of the edge of the collar band since that is where it will be attached attached to the trench coat later. I then attach the collar to the body of the trench coat by only stitching the inner layer of the collar to the trench coat. The outer layer will be attached in the next step to the facing of the trench coat. Here's another pro tip from me. Especially at the neck rounding of the back piece, it can be tricky to match up the seams perfectly. So to be able to stitch collar and back together, just cut every centimeter or so in the seam allowance to open the curve a bit to be able to pin. Here it's really important that you set down your needle exactly where the collar and label meet to have a nice edge there once you turn everything around. So just take your time, set down your needle, look, check everything and then stitch your collar to the back piece. I then top stitch the facings together to create one big facing piece which I will attach to the outer collar. So here you can see the facing and the collar, which I put right sides together to top stitch. This whole round of top stitching goes from front hem all the way over the label to the collar and back down. So to be sure to match up everything perfectly, I just put in a few pins to help me. Especially at matching points like the label edge in the front, the corner where label and collar band meet, middle back and shoulder seams are good pinning points. And again, to help me pin everything down, I just put a few cuts in the seam allowance so that everything lays flat and nice. Since the front piece has a 4cm seam allowance included, which the facing doesn't, I start sewing about 7-8cm to eight centimeters down the edge, but make sure to arrange the hemline by folding it up and pinning it to its final spot. And then it's just one round of top stitching. Once done with that, I turn the whole piece over and then it's time to iron. And ironing is a really important step in this because there is a few rules you have to go by so that everything lays correctly in the end. And look how nicely all the corners and edges came out. I'm really, really happy. Okay, so ironing. Find the spot where your label collar folds out. I marked it on my pattern by cutting into the seam allowance a bit. 
Now it gets a bit complicated. <laughs> From the hem until this point, iron the front piece one millimeter to the outside. From that piece all the way over the collar to the other side, iron the facing of the front piece, which is your outer label collar, and the outer collar to the outside. I wiggle the fabric a bit to get it just right. So can you see what I mean by like one centimeter ironing to the outside? It just makes the seams look very nicely and it creates this kind of stare. I don't know if you get what I mean, but you're basically not gonna see any seams, no ironing, no lines, no nothing on the outside. And then once you top stitch it, you fix this position into place. So make sure to be really, really exact while ironing and then obviously also while top stitching. I do the same top stitching around the whole collar area as I showed before. So at the very edge and then the width of my presser foot from that top stitching line. And the presser foot, by the way, is about five millimeters. While I'm already at it, I also fix the collar band into place. So I fuse basically both the inner and outer collar band to itself. Once done with that, it's time to finally do the sleeves. To have less bulge and like less fabric to move around while you're stitching the collar and label collar and everything, I just chose to do the sleeves at the very end because that's also some complicated stuff. So <laughs> I wanted this layered effect for my sleeve hem. So I made this extra pattern piece to mimic the cuffs of a shirt sleeve. I just put right sides together, top stitch, iron and top stitch twice again for both of my cuffs. I then put the darts into my sleeves and sew the side seams together. And one round of stitching and this is what it looks like in the end. So as you can see, this is the sleeve itself. This is what it's gonna look like, but the facing keeps folding out. So this is what we're gonna do. I have some belts planned for the sleeve. To be able to turn over my belts, I use the same technique which I showed and explained to you in another video, which is linked in the eye. I basically take a cotton string to help me turn everything over. I then iron the whole thing and top stitch it. And this is me realizing that I am out of metal eyelets, which means I have to hand sew all the belt holes in three belts. So I measure out where my holes will go, punch them with this handy hole puncher and sit down to hand sew. This was so hard, you guys. The fabric is a really thick weave, which made it really difficult to get my needle through. But with patience and endurance, I was able to push through it all in one go. And this is what the belts ended up looking. To fix the problem with my sleeve facing coming out, I made belt loops for the belts by folding a piece of fabric twice like so and cutting them to pieces of about four centimeters. I then ironed the corners facing to the inside and fixed the belt loops to the sleeve hem. And these are my finished sleeves and I'm so happy how everything turned out. This is exactly what I wanted, so let's go and continue with the project. For the waist belt, I did exactly the same as I did for my sleeve belts, just sewing down the whole thing, turning it over, top stitching and then hand sewing the holes into the belt. that fixed some belt loops into place and that was in the middle back and in the side seams. After all that is done, I sew the sleeves into place. Now I'm gonna show you something really exciting. I can sew buttonholes with my machine, so oh my god. So I got this huge attachment for my presser foot, which is basically a mechanically stirring fabric thingy. So it's like 
wiggling the fabric from left to right. You're gonna see it in just a minute. It's amazing. <laughs> you just put the fabric in and so that's it. Look how intricately the mechanics of this thing work. It's just amazing. I'm so blown away. And it just makes a complete buttonhole. With all the screws, you can make any buttonhole you need. Big, small, narrow, wide. You can change the zigzag width. Like everything is customizable. It's amazing. So I need a really, really big buttonhole like this, which is not quite doable by itself, but I found a really clever way to just do it. <laughs> so I am basically merging two buttonholes into one, if that makes sense. I am stitching and then I stitch the connection somewhere else and then I continue stitching down. So it's basically an open buttonhole now. And then since it's going up again, I just put the fabric down so that the needle is exactly where the opening ends. And then I just finish the buttonhole. That's basically all I'm doing. Um, so you can do any buttonhole length that you want basically with this trick. You just cut it open and then you're done with the buttonhole. So that's what I'm gonna do for my trench coat. I'm gonna put in four buttonholes because mine is gonna be unisex. So I'm gonna have four buttonholes, two on each side. So everybody, male or female, can close it the way they're used to. Side note, in case you didn't know, the male and the female closing type is the opposite. So for the male, you can put your hand in from the right side. And for the female, you can put in your hand from the left side. Apart from jeans, that's basically in every garment like that. So done with the buttonholes, it would be natural to just sew the buttons in. But before you can do that, you have to do the lining. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to sew all the lining pieces together. So I have a big lining piece, which I'm going to attach to the facing of the trench coat. The lining will be hemmed with a bias binding. This is actually the color you voted for on Instagram. Make sure to follow me there to also be able to design my future projects with me as I am doing boats and other stuff over there. As you can see, it comes pre-ironed and you just wrap it around your fabric and stitch along the open side of the tape and it makes a beautiful finishing. Since I'm doing a butterfly lining, I had to stitch a small portion of the bias binding on one wing of the lining already, as it gets attached to the other half in a second. I also started stitching the bias binding on the other hem, but not cut it instead, so I will have a continuous visible hem in the finished trench coat. The other one will be covered and not visible anymore at the end. I then sew both lining pieces together. So here you can see one piece of the bias binding is still hanging from the hem and the other one covered is cut off. I then sew on a piece of piping. I simply use my bias binding for this as well, but make sure to put it a few millimeters further from the stitching line of my lining, which I will sandwich this in between. And make sure to carefully stitch this into place as it needs to be uniform in the end. Next steps are pretty straightforward. I sew the side seam of the sleeves close and attach them to my lining. After that, I attach the lining to the facing of my trench coat. After pinning everything in place, I take my whole thing to the sewing machine again. And since usual lining fabric is a little see-through anyways, I can guide my machine to be one or two millimeters off to the side of the edge of the piping I sewed in before. This allows me to sew a clean and uniform finish. I then hem the facing and the lining in one go. That is why I had the piece of bias binding still attached. I just measured the remaining length of the hem of the outer fabric, so the length of the facing basically, and sewed it in place. For the other side, I just used a new piece of bias binding and did the same thing. The almost last thing is to attach the hem of the sleeves. I do that by reaching under my lining into the armhole and grabbing both my lining and my facing of the sleeves to avoid twisting the lining sleeve. I just put right sides together, take it to my sewing machine and top stitch it. I hem the whole trench coat by ironing four centimeters up and one centimeter down, top stitching it at three centimeters, sewing on the buttons, and that's it. The trench coat is all done. So thank you so much 
for watching. I hope you enjoyed me making a trench coat for the fall season and I hope I could inspire you to design and make your own clothes. If you have any questions, video suggestions and comments, feel free to leave them down below. Also, if you have any questions for a q and A, I I would be more than happy to answer them in an upcoming video. So please also comment them down below and check out all the links in my description, like the video and of course subscribe. You would help me a lot and I'm gonna see you next time. Bye guys!